Okie doke. So you guys got a piece of paper and you got a piece of tape. So we're gonna start with blind contour and I want you guys to watch me do it first. And then you guys are gonna do it too. So contour, you guys remember contour? What is a contour line drawing? Anybody know? I know it's Monday morning at like 7.30. Contours are the edges of objects, right? So a contour drawing is a drawing of edges of objects. It's basically an outline. It's an outline with no texture, no shading, none of those details. You will, however, get details in terms of like wrinkles so, and um, folds and things like that. So in drawing one, we did this and then we did some uh, and we did our blind and our modified by drawing our hand, which is what we're going to do today. We're going to spend 15 minutes doing this, and then we're going to move on to cross contour. And then you guys did an assignment where you drew flowers, and you watercolored them in. Remember that? Okay, so that's the skill we're going back to. So it means you're drawing from life, and it helps you draw from life because it, you know, you are able to capture these like wrinkles and you know these bends and curves of your fingers. So I'm gonna have you watch me. We're gonna do one blind contour and we're only gonna take two minutes to do blind and then we're gonna switch to modify. So blind contour is this. Blind contour means that I'm gonna draw my hand right now without looking at my paper. I'm gonna look only at my hand. And the reason that I'm gonna do that is not because I expect to have a successful drawing at the end. In fact, it'll probably look like a bunch of scribbles. But the, the thing about drawing uh, is really focusing on what you see and not what you think you see, right? So if you are forced to stare at the object that you're drawing versus the paper, then you're forced to stay more right-brained, right? You have to kind of really draw what you're seeing instead of what you think you want to draw because that's what you think sh it should be like. And that's what drawing is, the key to drawing is the success, right? Drawing what you actually see and not what you think you see. That's why we spent so much time in drawing one on that unit, drawing on the right side of the brain. So what I'm going to do here, and I'm going to use pen. You guys are going to use pencil, but I think my pen is going to show up better under the Elmo. I hope. Um, and I'm going to use pen to do this, but it doesn't matter. If you don't have a pencil, you can use pen because with modified contour, you don't erase, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand in a somewhat comfortable position, but I want my fingers to curl towards me. I don't just want it to be like pancake flat, run over by a semi-truck. So I'm going to have my hand kind of curl towards me so that I can deal with the issue of like th something coming towards me in space, this sort of foreshortening. Then I'm going to put, I'm going to pick an edge where I want to start. So let's say I'm going to start, let's keep it simple to start. I'll probably start over here on the edge of this finger and I'm going to put my um, pen down on the paper where I want to start my drawing. Now, once I have my pen down on the paper here, I'm going to turn around completely in my chair so that I cannot see my paper even if I want to. Okay? So, from this point on, I'm going to, what I'm really trying to do with this exercise, remember I said, I'm probably going to end up with a bunch of scribbles, but what I want to do is I want to train my eyes and my hand to work together. So that was the wrinkle in my index finger. I want you to notice the style of drawing that I'm doing. It is one solid continuous line. I am not sketching. There will be a time and a place for sketching later. Now my second finger is overlapping the first finger, so I have to switch gears and draw the fingertip of my second finger. This is gonna be my fingernail on my second finger. And now I'm gonna try to get back over here and finish off the first finger. Okay, so it did, like I said before, it is not sketching. And the reason that you're not sketching, there's a time and a place for sketching and sketching is totally a, a, a good way to draw and we will be doing sketching stuff later. But sketching means that you're like doing something like this with your pencil, right? You're going back and forth. 
That's not what this exercise is about. It's not about sketching. It's about that training of your eyes and your hands to work together. All right, now going back to the second finger here. And remember, when you're doing blind and modified contour, okay, that's two fingers. How's it look? Amazing. Amazing, right. So it's not supposed to really look like anything. Hey, that actually kind of looks like a fingernail. Give me a little credit, right? So, so it's not really supposed to look like anything. It's that training of your eyes and your hands to move together. Now, I'm going to only have you guys do this for two minutes, but it might seem like the longest two minutes of your entire life because it's a very heavily focused activity. Um, what I was about to say is when you're doing modified contour, and I struggle with this, I've been teaching this for 15 years and I still struggle with being able to talk and to you guys and draw at the same time because language and talking is a left brain function and drawing is a right brain function. So there's moments like when I'm demonstrating you'll notice I'll just like stop talking and it's because like I'm trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing with the drawing and I can't do both at the same time, right? So I'm going to have you guys try it. Um, you have paper and tape, and the only reason we're taping the paper down is because that way it won't scooch around on you while you're drawing yourself. So just tape your paper down top and bottom. Okay, so same thing, you know, if you wanna like do something where your hand is holding something and include that, you can, but you don't have to. It can just be your straight hand. And it's going to be the same thing where you're going to choose a relaxed position. This time, however, it's going to, I'm going to give you guys 10 minutes, okay? And again, you, you may not finish the entire hand in 10 minutes. One of the things, if you didn't include in your blind contour, that I want you to think about are the wrinkles. So when I am drawing, so if my pen was on the paper and I'm drawing this line, and I, I have to go this slow because my eyes are moving with it. When I get to a wrinkle, I'm going to go in, I'm going to get the wrinkle, and I'm going to come back out. When I see another wrinkle, I'm going to go in, I'm going to get the wrinkle, and I'm going to come back out. I'm not going to draw the perimeter of my hand, the outside of my hand, and then go back and put the wrinkles in because that doesn't allow you to get what I call puffy hand, right? So puffy hand means you're, when you draw it, it actually looks squishy right? Because it's skin and flesh, so it should look squishy. It should not look like a semi truck just ran over it and then it's got like lines in it. You're trying to get something natural. So if you draw it too much like this and then go put the lines in it later, it just looks like a like hamburger helper hand, right? So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the differences as I do this. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to find a relaxed position and I'm going to choose an edge. And I guess I'll start with my thumb this time here. Now you guys are going to get a slightly different view because you're looking straight down in the camera and I'm looking this way, but you'll get the idea. So I'm putting my pen down on the edge and now I'm going to slowly start following. My eyes are not going to leave my hand that I'm drawing. I'm not going to look at my pen. because I'm trying to capture every little detail that I see. Now, occasionally with modified contour, I can stop and I can look at what I've drawn. But you'll notice when I'm looking at my pen, my pen stops. I don't look at my pen and keep my pen moving because then my eyes aren't on my subject. Another thing that I can do with modified contour that you can't do with blind contour is you can lift your pencil. So here's my thumbnail. So I can lift my pencil from here. I couldn't in blind contour because I would get lost. I wouldn't know where to go. But in modified contour, I can now go to another part of the drawing. I can lift my pencil a little bit Bless you. Thank you. 
So one of the things I do in Modified Contour when I actually look at my pen is I'm judging for distance. Like where is it that I want to start making this wrinkle come in? And I want the wrinkle to be kind of behind the knuckle. So I'm, I'm glancing over, I am glancing over at my paper about, I don't know, 10, 15% of the time. But 85, 90% of the time, I am eyes on my hand that I'm drawing to capture every little detail that I can. And modified contour line drawings have certain quality to them. You know, you lose the sketchiness and also, proportions can be a little weird in modified contour, and that's okay. Okay, so I'm going to pick up my pencil and go back and get this wrinkle. What interferes with your ability to draw, I think, especially when doing modified contour more than anything, is your ego. Because, and you guys already sort of demonstrated this to me, because what happened when you finished your blind contour drawing and you looked at it, a lot of you guys laughed because it looked ridiculous, right? So there's something about drawing that is very, very intimidating to people. And they have a fear that, and I think this is with a lot of things, that if they are 100% completely successful, the moment they pick up the pen, well then they're terrible, and it's awful and they shouldn't do it. You got to let that go when you're doing this. Modified contour. It might look awful. But you know what? Nobody's going to see it except for you. So one of the things I want you to notice is, have I erased even one time? Anybody? Bueller? Have I erased even one time? No. I have not. I'm working with pen to prove that I'm not going to erase. Now, let me ask you, if you guys think it's intimidating to sit in your seat and draw a drawing that only you're seeing, do you think it's intimidating for me to sit in front of an entire class and hope to heck that the drawing that I'm making actually looks like something? You think I'm having some ego issues? Maybe you don't think so, but I am. If it doesn't come out and I'm drawing for an entire class, then I'm like, well, they're not going to believe me. So I do get in a position when I'm doing this where I want to stop, I want to fix it, I want to erase, but I don't. So that means no erasing, you just push through. When you experience confusion, like I've got this finger coming towards me, Close one eye. As you're drawing, if you close an eye, it takes away your depth perception. Depth perception is awesome when you're trying to, you know, drive a car or throw a baseball. But when you're drawing, you're trying to eliminate depth because you've got a 3D object in front of you. and you're trying to put it on a two-dimensional surface. See right there, I was like, oh, I kind of made a funky angle with that fingernail and I wanted to fix it, but I'm not gonna. Okay, you guys ready for your turn? You ready, Adrian? Yeah. All right. All right, I'll quit there then. I'm going to give you guys 10 minutes, and I want you to do the same. No erasing, one solid, fluid, continuous line. Stay focused on the hand that you're drawing and not the pen.
So what we're gonna, the next thing to imagine, and why this is so important with your scratch board, is because we're going to be using just line, not shading. So how do you make an object with just line appear like it's popping out, right? So if I take this drawing right here, right, can you guys actually see it? Let me zoom out a little. That's just like my hand and I traced it, right? But if I add lines on top of it without any shading at all, I can still make it look like it's popping off the page. It depends what choice you make with your lines. So you have to think about the direction that your lines are going to go and how those are going to impact that depth. Um, we're going to take just a couple of minutes before we go to that worksheet that I gave you and we're going to imagine like if we were just going to put lines on top of the hand that we just drew to try to make it look round, what would we add? Well, there's some clues for you here. So this line and these wrinkles that we've already added are curved. So I can start adding lines that go this way and that would be more of a hatching mark, right? But if I want the object to look like it's round, I'm gonna wanna try to match the curve of the finger. I always kind of think of like a, a topographic map. You guys know what that is? It's like a map that shows like mountain ranges and things like that on it, so it shows the depth. It's kind of like that on your finger. And I also kind of think when I think about doing this on hands, I think about like Spider-Man, right? So if I was like Spider-Man and I slipped that webbed glove on, what curves would those lines of the webbing actually look like on my hand? So if I want this to look like it's a recess in my palm, and then I want it to change direction and look like the hand is popping up. So right on your drawings that you just did, just add a few lines to it and see if you can kind of figure out what directions you would go. Now, if you want to add cross hatching to it, you can because there's two contours. So if I want to go this way and add a second set of lines, that would be the marks that I would make if I was doing cross, um, cross hatching. So I can add that series of lines that, to show the contour the, of the whole object. And the choice for my lines comes from the outside edges, the contours of the object. So when I do something like this, I can start with my line going this way. And then when I get to this side of the finger, it switches and it ends up going the other way because the contour on the other side is different. What would fingernails look like? Maybe flat this way, bumpy the other way. And the artist who does this kind of broke it down step by step so of how she did these scratch boards. So we're going to do the same thing, right? So step one, she transfers. So when you're done with the drawing, which I hope some of you guys took it home and were ready, so tomorrow I'm going to demonstrate to you how to transfer the drawing. You're going to take your drawing, place it on top of your scratch board, trace it, and leave this sort of shadow I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of light. It's shadow image, it looks kind of like that, in sort of a chalk that would wipe away. Then, we're gonna take it to the next, I don't know if this is better or that is better. 
Then we're gonna take it to the next level, and you this is what she calls her fur guide. So this is cross contour. So she's really thinking about the direction that the fur is gonna go. What direction does she have to make her lines, and how is it gonna change directions for each animal that she draws so that it's looking like it's round rather than just flat? My favorite one is the elephant, though. Because you can really see all that cross contour work that she does on those elephants and how she's really kind of thinking through the direction of each of her marks, right? The next step of scratch board is you build up highlights, right? So you start, and I like this lion, is, this lion is a really good example of a before and after. You start, you start adding to those cross contours, you start filling it in. So the first thing is you just figure out your cross contour, then you start filling it in. But a lot of students get to this point right here and they're like, okay, I'm done. But there's one more step. Because all this is very, very gray, there's not a lot of contrast and it doesn't really pop. But when she gets to the next step and she adds that final layer of highlight, then the lion starts looking like really three-dimensional. So if, again, look at the difference between that and that. That's much more finished looking. So a lot of you guys, same thing with the elephant here. Step two and finished. Huge difference, right? So a lot of you guys will get to this place right here and say, okay, I'm done. And I'll say, no, you really need to push those highlights a little more. And that's where I'm going to get you guys to go, right? That last little bit. So that's kind of how it works. And then she adds color, which you guys can too, because we have the colors. Um, but we're going to do a little more practice with cross contour on this worksheet that I just gave you. Now, I, I did this example of the apple. And we're going to do the apple together. And then I'm going to let you guys do the other ones on your own. And I put cross-hatching on both of them. I think it's very clear that one of them really enhances the form and one does not, right? So the choice that you make with these lines by themselves really make a huge difference with whether the object looks flat or round. So we're going to do this apple together right now. And then I'm going to let you guys try to figure out the vase and the banana on your own. And you guys can look at the finished sample here and how I'm going to get there. So one of the things I really wanted this, this apple to look like that, you know, it went down in the center there. So I didn't just draw right over the top of that mark. I started my contours from that center curving out. And then when I got to the other side of that sort of divot, I started fanning my marks out the other direction. The stem is kind of a small detail, but the stem is not flat like a pancake. It's a little tiny baby cylinder. So when I added my lines to the stem, I curved them like little smiley faces. And this would just be for scratch board. This is just the first step. This is just the figuring out the mark making. And then for the front of the apple, again, I have two contours, the contour of the left side and the contour of the right side. So when I get to the center of the apple, I'm going to be pretty straight. But from this one out, I'm going to change to follow each contour. So as I get to this one, I'm going to start bending it more and more. 
to start matching, the closer I get to the contour, the more I'm gonna try to match. So same thing on the opposite side, starting out a little curvy. Kind of reminds me of a pumpkin, you know, and if that's why I kind of gave you guys that sketchbook assignment that I did this week is because I think that really exemplifies cross contour and the way it works. Now you could leave it just like this. If you decide to do hatching, you can just leave it. It's already showing me form. But if you want to do cross hatching and add the rest of it, you can do that too. So what I want you guys to do is when you're done with that, there's two other objects here. I'm not going to show how I did them. I want you to try to do the vase and the banana on your own and see if you can get it to look like the form and not just the shape. Yeah. Okay. 